Hey guys, Josh Asapusis here and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. So this past weekend I actually played uh, one of the first real-life tournaments uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! wise. I've played in a while that wasn't locals, obviously due to uh, circumstances. And I played uh, probably my favorite deck tactical play-wise, which was Sky Striker. Before going into the actual deck profile, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, Yugi Wang. They did this super cool uh, 3 vs 3 tournament with amazing prize support. There were 13 teams, if I, if I remember correctly, so uh, 39 players, which is definitely uh, a great turnout considering the circumstance we are in. And we're just in the Netherlands kind of get, like getting out of the entire lockdown and um, you know stuff like this actually possible again. Just huge shout out to them and obviously uh, shout out to my teammates, uh, Rafael Andevan and Bart Ladru, which uh, you might be familiar with if you uh, follow the Yu-Gi-Oh scene. I mean, the tournament was amazing. My uh, Team was amazing. I'll just do like a quick uh, rundown of the matchups and their decks uh, after the deck profile, but let's just check out the deck profile first. Alright, so hopping into the deck profile. Um, You'll see that this is actually a going first Sky Striker list, and I'll go over why that is uh, real quick. Although the reason should be quite obvious, actually, the reason we are uh, going first both as going second, uh, which was basically the only way to play Sky Striker before, in my opinion, is because we got back engage. Previously, there really was nothing to set up to uh, or to set up for. On your first turn, you really uh, just wanted to break your opponent's board and then, you know, set up enough uh, Widow Anchor slash Shark Cannons for them to not be able to come back. Uh, however, right now we actually can set up for something, which is uh, resolving double engage for plus one on your second turn, which is obviously incredibly strong. Um, so really what we want to do is we want to survive the first turn, which we will be able to do uh, using various engine and non-engine interruptions. And then hopefully, you know, we can go Shizuku search for engage and then on the next turn we can just uh, totally blow out the opponent. Uh, but yeah, let's start checking out the ratios for the deck. Uh, we are of course playing triple ray. Uh, this is the best monster in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, she just literally does everything. This card is just incredibly strong, it's really good against random stuff like, uh, you know, Dino, uh, Conductor, Flip Face Down, she just dodges that. It's really good against the, all the Dragon Link negates, uh, because, or not the negates, but the interruptions. You really just need to uh, be able to activate your, uh, or negate their Burl Savage, or the, uh, what's it called, the Red Hot Dragon Archfiend Abyss. And then just Ray by yourself usually plays through the uh, the Heraldic Seal and the Bouncy card, what's it called, the uh, the Tidying. Uh, so yeah, this card is just amazing. And then uh, to sub complement her, we're actually playing Double Rose. I know a lot of people are on uh, just playing one of this, and I get why Rose is just definitely not as good as Ray is. However, we do want to play um, you know enough stars basically because. Honestly, most of the games I lose are just the games I don't uh, see a way to get to the extra deck. And um, while well, three rows is definitely uh, too much, two is definitely uh, a right number in my opinion. I would be cutting it down to one. Uh, she was also super helpful because I actually played against uh, a bunch of Dragoon decks this weekend. And uh, this card just helps you uh, out them. Like uh, one of the games, my opponent actually had Order Dragoon. Um, but I managed to go into Hayata via, via Chaining Horde of Drones and then um, run over the pl Preda plant and then since he already used his Dragoon Negate on my Cosmic Cyclone I could go uh, summon the Rose from the Graveyard, Negate Dragoon and then actually go into Zeke, banish the Dragoon, boost Zeke for 1000 um, and then eventually I managed to win that game which was absolutely insane so that's also something Rose is uh, pretty nice for. That's all the real monsters uh, we are playing in the deck and then we are of course playing a lot of hand traps, as most decks are in the current form. We are playing Triple Edge Blossom, and this is just the most generic hand trap. Uh, don't really think there's much to say about this one. It just has some kind of role in every matchup. It's really good against some um, of your bad matchups, like for example Prank Kids. Uh, we're playing Triple Failure. Uh, it could be argued that Impermanence is a little bit better than Failure is because Impermanence uh, doesn't lose to Calber the Grave and it also doesn't get hit by uh, Triple Tactical Talents. However, we are playing the famous Hulky Firebacks Access Code Talker package, so um, you know we actually do need Vader in the deck, and uh, yeah, effect negation actually quite nice. Then we're also playing Triple Ghost Bell. This is very nice in the mirror match. It's nice against Drytron, and then uh, the main reason we are playing a full playset of this is actually against 
uh, Trap Brigade Revolt, obviously, so, um, yeah, nice, and then the last two hand traps we're playing are Double D-Crow, um, I'm kind of unsure about this, uh, maybe uh, I want to try Skullmeister instead of the DD Crow, but DD Crow is obviously also very nice against Drytron, uh, the mirror match again. It has its uses against uh, Tri Brigade as well, it can like just put them in a weird uh, spot depending on their hands. Um, but Skullmeister is significantly get better against Prank Kids, so like it kind of depends how popular Prank Kids will be, um, whether I will swap, to will swap them to Skullmeister or not. Um, but yeah, 11 hand traps in the main deck um, because we are playing some uh, more oriented going first cards as well and I think like 11 is uh, it's fine, right? There aren't really a lot of crazy super wombo combo decks where you need to see like multiple hand traps except for Drytron, that is. Um, but yeah, then moving on to the spells, starting off with the striker spells, we are of course playing Triple Widow Anchor, like obviously. Then Double Shark Cannon, um, you, honestly, this is mostly just used when you want to go for game um, somehow or some way. But it also provides some kind of disruption against uh, some of the decks in the format. It's also really good in mirror match when you can like take a Kagari on their turn, get engaged back and uh, stuff like that. Then I'm playing double field spell. Honestly, uh, playing triple field spell on the going first deck might not be that bad. And I do kind of want to uh, try that out. However, space is just, uh, it's just limited, it is what it is, and uh, you don't really want to see multiples of it either, because, you know, you can only activate the effect once per turn. Uh, so yeah, two, and then the one-offs, we are playing Hornet Drones, Multi-Roll, uh, Eagle Booster, shout out to the entire Dutch community, uh, they know this is my favorite Sky Striker card. Um, but yeah, I mean, those should just speak for themselves, right, and then Eagle Booster is... Um, it just protects your link, um, it's nice to have, especially in the mirror match, it's uh, very strong. But then actually in most of the matchups in the current format it is, so it do does definitely have its uses. And then uh, you, there is just a surprising amount of times where you just want to add this of Shizuku, then just activate it to um, actually be able to set back more cards uh, with the multi-roll effect. Uh, so yeah, because you will already have like your Shark Cannon and your uh, Widow Anchor in the Graveyard. And then I'm playing uh, one Afterburner, I'm not playing Jamming Waves in the main deck that is because we're going first but this card is just too good to uh, not play, it's just really good going second and then it just also helps you like in the grind game. Um, obviously when you start resolving it for, um, you know, the uh, plus one trades, this card is very strong and it just helps you out big monsters um, because sometimes you don't want to like banish your Widow Anchor or something like that. And then the last card of course is um, Engage. Honestly, I was just super excited when this came back, um, but then, honestly, I didn't feel like it was... Uh, it lived up to the hype, like, I definitely think it made Sky Striker a lot better than it was before, previously, obviously, but um, it didn't, like, instantly catapult it into best deck status. It does obviously just make the deck uh, more consistent and more powerful, which is nice, and then it also allows you to uh, go back to uh, playing going first, which is, um, which is nice as well. This card just does everything for the deck. You really never want to set this off multi-roll unless you ran out of uh, Kagaris. And there's like cool stuff you can do. Um, like like I said, like in Mirror Metro, you go, go like Shark Cannon to get back there, Kagari, get this back, then resolve it for plus one, then go into your own Kagari and just, you know, resolve it again. Um, which is nice, and this will definitely allow you to win games uh, you wouldn't have without it. But really, like, you don't need it in the deck to win. Like, there's... Uh, you'll see I'm playing uh, Pot of Desires, and there have been games where I just banished this of Desires because I had to activate the Desires before getting this out of the deck, and then I still won anyway. Uh, but yeah, Engage. Very happy with that. Then uh, we're of course playing a Reinforcement of the Army because it's just another Ray. Uh, terraforming, Upstart Goblin, Call by the Grave. Uh, these should all be like semi-staples, I think. Especially now uh, with Engage being back to uh, 1, it's just nice to load up your grave for, with 3 spells as soon as possible and just another consistency card. And I mean, basically all the decks in the format are playing a ton of hand traps and even the decks that aren't playing hand traps, they get just disrupted really bad by this. So um, yeah, I really feel like all these cards are kind of staples. Then I'm playing double Cosmic Cyclone in the main deck. Um, would have played 3, but there's just no space. Um, it's just good against a lot of... Uh, a lot of matchups. Honestly, the only uh, really meta-relevant matchup where I feel like it's not that good is against 
uh, Drytron, but um, it is what it is. It's just really good in mirror. It's good to just hit uh, the revolt. It's good against like any trap deck basically. So yeah. Then, uh, like I said, I am playing uh, Desires. Uh, like I know, um, seeing the, the Sky Striker Facebook group, everybody was like, "No, you won't be playing Desires anymore because you don't want to banish Engage." Um, and you know, I get where people are coming from, but you really just seeing the extra card, getting another spell in Grave is really nice. And I have to admit, it, I really dislike activating it going first. Um, but if you know you're playing against like a more grindy deck, it's absolutely fine to just keep it in hand and get to engage out of the deck first before activating this. And then preferably you will also go like Hayata Sent, multi-roll and then you will activate this. Um, but I definitely think it's necessary, it's a consistency card. I do think it's better than Pot of Prosperity, but I am debating on playing actually both. So playing both Desires and Prosperity, even though they conflict. Like I said, it's just super important to see your, um, your Ray or Rose or Horn and Drones, I guess. And, you know, those cards just help uh, doing that, but for this event I just played the Triple Desires. I did lose one game, I think, because I banished Double Anchor or something. Did I? No, actually, uh, actually, I don't think I lost during this event anyway, I did during testing, but during the event I don't think I lost any game because I man uh, banished anything uh, in particular of Desires. Like, I played a game against Prank Kids where I banished, like, Engage and multi roll and like double ray or something and I still I still just won the game um, So yeah, uh, definitely won't be cutting this I think it's uh, a necessary evil basically and then the last three cards in the main deck are uh, shared right This has been uh, getting quite popular um, It's just very nice because you can set it and then uh, It's basically like a pseudo maxi that only works when you're going first of course But in the grind game it's also really nice and with the shared right you can just draw into uh, the bazillion hand traps you're playing uh, to make sure you don't die. So uh, yeah, I think this card's uh, extremely, extremely nice. Uh, I'm honestly not sure if I will keep it in the main deck because I do want to play some more like actual consistency cards, but uh, maybe I I'm just not sure yet. But yeah, Shared Drive was definitely, uh, it was very good this uh, this weekend. Then move on to the extra deck, it's really quite basic. I'm playing Triple Kagari, of course, then Triple Shizuku, I'm playing Double Hayate since uh, this is a going first build. Like in the going, Second build, I think playing more of them is a little bit more important because if it gets disrupted, it's actually more um, annoying. But I really never miss the third one. And even like in the going second build, playing two is fine. I'm playing the one Kaina just because, you know, the defensive ability does come up. Um, then uh, this was actually the MVP this weekend. Somehow, I figured, uh, as you've seen, I'm not playing like droplets or triple, uh, triple tactical talents in the main deck. Uh, because I figured like Dragoon has kind of fallen out of popularity uh, aside from like people playing it in Drytron but I actually played against like two dedicated Dragoon decks I played against like the Subterra Dragoon deck um, and I played against Scrap Dino who also made uh, Dragoon in the combo and this was actually the MVP because I managed I um, against the Subterra Dragoon deck one of the games I managed to just go like um, Zeke Shizuku and then uh, I made Sh Zeke into 25 and then reduced the uh, Dragoon uh, <laughs> By uh, with Shizuku because I had an, like a ton of spells in the graveyard and uh, managed to walk over it because I uh, I forced a gate by something that um, I don't know maybe rain grave I don't really remember but yeah Zeke was just uh, super nice um, honestly I might consider playing too um, even though I realized it did maybe overperform in uh, in the tournament but yeah Zeke is actually super super nice then I'm playing uh, Phoenix and Unicorn you know you just want something like this to get rid of order and um, Sometimes you just need something aside from Ningirsu to link into with your opponents, guys. If you went uh, into Widow Anchor a couple of times, you'll see I'm not playing Ningirsu actually. Uh, I'm just using like Zeek to Outer Goon or the uh, Selene Hulky Access Code package. Um, I mean, this is pretty staple uh, at this point in Sky Striker, right? Uh, and I already, I already talked about it. It's just you use it to go for game. Um, if you can bait Dragoon Engage, you use to out the Dragoon, the Dragoon by just walking over it with the Access Code. Yeah, it's just nice to have some form of actual win condition to close out the game instead of just outgrinding your opponent. Um, but yeah, that's the side deck. Then moving on to the... Uh, sorry, the extra deck. Then moving on to the side deck. I'm playing evenly matched. Uh, this card is actually super nice and I think this card is extremely strong this format because there's not a lot of decks putting up like Omni or Spell Negates or Trap Negates, I should say. Um, and this can definitely blow out a lot of like control decks. It's good against Tri Brigade. It's good against... Um, Prank it, I just, uh, it's good against the mirror match, this card is just very, very nice in general. 
uh, underrated kind of. And then and this is the only going first card I think I'm siding in, which is a summon limit just against like the crazy wombo combo decks. I don't want to play like too many floodgates or uh, actual trap cards because I don't want to lose out to uh, you know lightning storm, feather duster, twin twister, etc. But I did like the idea of having just like some kind of card that helps uh, that protects me from from the uh, the wombo combo decks, and this card is just a little bit better uh, than. There can be only one since after the first turn, you really only need to go into Kagari and then into Shizuku each turn. And, uh, you know, there can be only one actually kind of shuts that down, so... Uh, yeah, the triple summon limit, this card was, uh, was nice. Then, um, some more back row removal in Twin Twister. I'm not playing like Lightning Storm or Feather Dust or anything like that, because I really want... I know a lot of people playing Anti-Spell, so I just want to have the quick place to get rid of that. Um, yeah, and then I'm also playing like the the third cyclone for that exact reason. Then because I figured like some people might play um, a dragoon decks, and then also this card is just very nice against Drytron. I uh, decided to include forbidden droplet, especially with engage. You know, being back, this card becomes extra strong because it uh, basically negates your opponent's entire board, and then also sets up your uh, your engage play, which is very nice. And then the last two cards I'm playing is the one uh, jamming wave, just because this card is good in, uh, against specific matchups. Like, it's good against Guru, it's good in the mirror match, um, there's just a bunch of other uh, matchups it's good in. It's also, like, in some matchups where uh, you wouldn't consider it, like, specifically good, it's still nice to have when you're going second. So that's nice, and then the last uh, card is just the, the third DD Crow. So yeah, guys, that was the striker list. Um, as I promised, I'll just talk about the tournament uh, for myself real quick. It was 3 vs 3 tournament. Uh, our team went undefeated, 4-0. Uh, in the end, personally, I went 3-1, uh, I think uh, Bart also went 3-1, and then Ruff went undefeated, if I remember correctly. Uh, I was player A playing Sky Striker, as you saw, and then uh, Ruff and Bart actually both played uh, Tri Brigade Zoo. Yeah, so in the first round we played against a team of uh, just prank kids, so all the players played prank kids. Uh, shout out to uh, Jean-Louis Bernard, who was uh, one of the players for the team, he's a friend of mine, he's a great guy. Um, and I, uh, this was actually my loss, I won the first game even though I banished like engaged and stuff of my uh, desires and then in the second game I went Rota, he went Ash Blossom and then the seven turns after I didn't see like any access to Ray, uh, I could like keep hand trapping him and like anchoring and whatever to not uh, actually get comboed but I just never saw Ray and eventually I, he just attacked with um, Mew Mew six times and then one time with uh, the bird and then I just, that was game. And then the third game, uh, actually by that point, like, both Bart and Ralph had won their matches, luckily for me. Um, and I eventually just uh, just lost, because, I know, he just liked, like, everything. And um, Prank is just, like, one of the hardest matches for the striker deck, to be honest. Then in the second round, I played against uh, Guru uh, Dragoon. And I actually got Dragoon, like, literally all the games. But like I talked about a little bit already in the... In the deck part of the of the video, in the first game I managed to bait like his Dragoon negate with, I think, a Ray Effect from Grave or uh, something like that. And then I just uh, could boost my Zeke big enough with like all the spells I had uh, acquired at that point, including Engage for plus one, of course. Um, just to run over the Dragoon. Then in the second game I couldn't out Dragoon and in the third game I... Uh, my head was just insane. I had like Desires which he didn't negate and I went evenly which he negated and I even lead him again and he just had nothing left and then I uh, could set up like uh, Eagle Booster so he had to negate the Eagle Booster basically on his next turn and then the turn after I could go like engage for plus one and just uh, walk over his Dragoon with my Exco Talker and then that left him with like zero cards against my infinite cards so uh, that was very very nice then the third game I played against um, my friend Nick who is a really good player he played uh, Scrap Dino uh, I won the die roll and managed to disrupt like always plays, but he still managed to uh, out on Dragoon with uh, set order. Then in my turn, he I went uh, multi roll effect. He changed order, obviously. I changed Hornet Drones, which was fine. Then changed Cyclone, which he negated with the Dragoon, so I was still ordered. But I could actually run over his Predator Plant with uh, Hayata. Then Rose on his Dragoon to negate Dragoon Zeke, banish his Dragoon, boost my uh, Zeke by 1000. This boost actually permanent, so it just stayed 25. He didn't top deck anything, his Dragoon returned, I boosted my Zeke again to 35, ran over his Dragoon and then basically uh, he just lost because he couldn't top deck anything to get out of the out of the game set and I just had like a really big Zeke to win the game. And then on the second game, he went like super duper full combo like Lagia, Dragoon, Omega, Tyreno, but I had Droplets and Desires and Engage, so uh, GG. <laughs> and then in the last match I played a 
against... Um, I played against Tetsim actually, uh, was playing Virtual World, their entire team was playing Virtual World. Shout out to them, like Sofa Wajo, Tetsim and uh, Bruce. Uh, they all played Virtual World, which is again a horrible matchup, so I literally played only bad matchups the entire tournament. But in the first game, he just didn't have that much. Like, I could stop his turn with one Ash, and then just um, eventually outgrind him. And then in the second game, I just I just had the nuts. I had like Twin Twister, Twin Twister, Cyclone, Engage, Rota. He Ashed the Rota, uh, or he went anti spell, I just Twin Twister did, he went Rota. I, I went Rota, he went Ash, I just went Engage for plus one and just kind of won the game from there. Uh, so yeah, that was nice. Um, again, shout out to Ruff and Bart for uh, teaming with me, that was, uh, I just had a lot of fun. Shout out to Yugi Wong because, you know, hosting the tournament, and again, it was just insanely fun. I think there will be another 3 vs 3 tournament next month, which I will definitely be participating in, because 3v3 is just the best way to play Yugi in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the profile, enjoyed the striker deck. If you have like any uh, thoughts about the striker deck, be sure to let me know because I'm really not um, quite convinced at what the definite best build for the format is uh, for striker right now. So definitely uh, open to hearing suggestions. Uh, of course, if you did like this video, be sure to leave a like, uh, leave a comment if you want to, and if you haven't subscribed yet but do enjoy this type of content, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!